If you just picked up a brand new M2 iPad Pro, I'm going to show you the first 14 things that you need to do. And this is going to range from beginner tips for getting started and important settings to change to advanced tricks that you might not have even known existed. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you want to do is very simple. Go into your settings, go to general, and go to software update, and you want to check for a software update. So my iPad shipped with an outdated version of iPadOS. So I had to update to iPadOS 16.1 just to get the features that I was promised and to make sure I have a stable, good experience with the software. So the first thing you want to do is definitely check for a software update and download and install that. The next thing you want to do is try out the brand new hover feature with the Apple Pencil. So this is a new feature exclusive for the M2 iPad Pro only. So what this does is it allows you to see basically where your cursor is going to go before you actually touch the screen. So it's kind of like a pointer right there. You can see before touching and making any marks, you know, if you're doing artwork or anything like that, you'll be able to see where your cursor is going to go or how big your brush is going to be before you actually push down and make that mark. And this is going to be an excellent feature for artists and really even casual users. It's just really nice to have. Now, if you tap on these three dots right there, you will see that we have hover preview. So you could turn this on or off straight from from here then if you go to your pencil settings which is in your settings and apple pencil by the way you will see that we have two brand new settings here for pencil hover so it says show effects when using apple pencil and allow double tap only with pencil hover so this is a really great feature to have i find this being very useful when you switch between the pen and the eraser because it only invokes when you're hovering not when you're actually drawing so for example if i'm hovering and i double tap it'll switch to the eraser but if i'm down on the screen and double tap it's not going to change back to the pen until i lift up and I'm hovering again. So I just encourage you to try out the new hover feature. Even if you don't think you're going to like it or use it, try it out. It's actually really awesome. You can even use it on the home screen here, really just throughout iPad OS. And you can see I'm just hovering over these app icons and they turn big, kind of just telling me what I'm going to do before I actually do it. The next thing you want to do is get familiar with gestures, especially if you are a new iPad user. So for instance, to quickly take a screenshot, I just swipe up from the bottom left corner and it takes a screenshot just like so I can mark up if I want to if I tap on done we do also have a new option here to copy and delete or save to quick note so you could do that or you could just delete the screenshot now if you want to change that you can do that so if you go into your settings and then right here in the Apple pencil settings you have left corner swipe for screenshot and you could change that between quick note screenshot or off so of course if I did it in the bottom right it will pull up a quick note if I do that correctly. You just have to do it fast. So it doesn't think you're trying to multitask or something like that. So you don't need an Apple pencil to do this. You could also use your fingers here. And if you're in an application and you want to go home, just look for the black bar on the bottom and just swipe up from that just like you do on the iPhones. And if you swipe up and hold that will invoke the multitasking. So you could see all of your currently open applications. And if you wanted to close out of them, just swipe up on those cards. Now, also, if you're in an application, you could do a four finger pinch to go back to the home screen as well you could also use a five finger swipe to go from app to app so you could use five fingers there or you can just use the little black bar at the bottom just like you can on the iPhone and if you want to move some apps or some widgets around just tap and hold anywhere where there's blank space and that will put you into juggle mode and to get out of it just swipe up from the bottom just like so that's a very easy way to do it now one other thing I wanted to mention is the keyboard you could actually make the keyboard smaller as well so if you have the big keyboard right here just simply take two fingers and pinch in and that will give you a small iPhone style keyboard right here and to make it bigger again just pinch out like so and then of course we do have our same iPhone style actions in here as well so if you take three fingers and swipe to the right that will redo swipe to the left that will undo what you just did and if you want to pull up that menu really quickly just take three fingers and tap like so and you will see you have the menu up top along with the little menu right here for the text you just typed the next thing you want to do is try out and get familiar with the brand new stage manager feature so this is a brand new way of multitasking on the iPad and it's pretty great so if you swipe down on the control center by default you will see that we have a new toggle there for stage manager now if that's not there for some reason 
reason, just go into your settings, go to control center, and you will see this blue stage manager icon right there. That will be down here under more controls. Just tap on the green plus and that will add it to your control center. Now, if we go back out and invoke this, if we turn this feature on, we could actually turn it on and also tap and hold to change some of the settings on the fly. So we can turn on or off the recent apps and turn on or off the dock and also turn off Sage Manager completely. So let me show you how this works. So just open up any application. So we'll just open up the App Store, for example. And you can see I've been using this because I have certain groups over here and certain applications open on the left-hand side, which are going to be my recent applications. But the main thing you can do here is you can resize your windows if you wanted to pull up something else in here. Like for instance, if I wanted to take another app that's already open, I could just simply pull this over and bring that into this instance right here. And you can see I have two different sized applications right here. I could also pull up, let's just say the calendar. I'll pull that one right here. And we can have multiple different applications in this one screen. So it really allows you to take full advantage of especially this 12.9 inch display that I'm using right here. This is also going to allow you to essentially use iPhone applications properly on the iPad. Now, if you want to close out of something, just tap on these three dots up top and you will see some new options there for full screen, add another window, minimize or close. So I want to close. So I'm just going to close out of that right there. And you can see here's what stage manager looks like on the 11 inch model. So you don't get near as much real estate as you do with the 12.9 inch model. And I have another tip coming up next that's going to help you take even more advantage of this big display play right here. So again, you can see we can kind of just resize these applications that we tap on full screen that will of course take this application to full screen. And we do still have the sizing down here in the bottom, right? So we can resize it that way, or we can always tap on these three dots right here and change some options right there. So if we tap on add another window, you can see that will allow us to pull up another window right here. So we could tap on one of these applications. I'll just tap on music, for example, and that adds that into here. And like I said, you could always pull over the recent applications right there to kind of just pull them into the workflow that you have going on right here. And if you tap on minimize that will push them back over into those recent apps. So just get familiar with stage manager. It is kind of a learning curve with it because it is kind of a lot going on, but you can have, you know, different applications or different workflows set up for different scenarios, which I think is really cool. Now, this of course is the classic split view right here where you have different applications going at once. You do also have slide over as well, which you can kind of go through different applications and slide over if you put, put those in there. So let me pull this back up. Let me put, let's just say app store into the slide over view. That way you have multiple applications in the slide over. So that is the classic multitasking, but stage manager is the new multitasking with iPad OS and this M2 iPad pro. Now the next tip is a big one for the 12.9 inch display. And that is to take advantage of the brand new display scaling. So if you go into your settings, this is the tip I was just talking about, by the way, if you go in your settings and then go to display and brightness, and then go all the way down to the bottom, you will see display zoom. That's not new, but if you tap on that, we have a new option here called more space and take a look at this. So I'm just going to go out of here and show you guys real quick what stage manager looks like without this. So I'm just going to pull up something in stage manager. All right, we'll just stick with this, whatever. Let's just go back into our settings now and we're going to turn that to more space. So let's do more space. It's going to kind of reset the resolution real quick. And now when it comes back, you will see, I have to put this back into landscape mode. Once we tap on done, you could see a difference right away. Everything looks smaller and that's just because the resolution has been improved. So here's what that same stage manager setup looks like now with this feature turned on. So display scaling is an awesome feature. It allows you to have so much more space on your iPad. And you know, some people think that, oh, it's just smaller, just made the icon smaller. That's not the case. It's improved resolution. So you're able to see more content because the resolution has been improved. So I think this is awesome and it's definitely needed for using stage manager and just any type of multitasking. Now, if you don't use that at all, you may not need this, but I think it is essential for multitasking on the iPad. Now, the next thing you need to do is learn how to really use the Apple pencil. So the Apple pencil, of course, it's very easy to know that you could just type out and draw shapes and things like that, but there are a lot of hidden features and kind of tips and tricks that you need to know with the Apple Pencil. So first of all, you can see shapes right here. These are not perfect at all. But if I wanted to draw them perfect without actually having to draw them perfect, I can do that. So here's what I mean. If I write a triangle, if I draw a triangle right there and tap and hold or just hold on it, you can see it makes it like a perfect triangle. Same with a square 
clearly this is not a perfect square but if I hold down before I lift up after I'm done you know drawing it it makes a perfect square and same with a circle clearly not a perfect circle but look if I hold right there it makes it a perfect circle so that is really cool you can see it does that for pretty much all of the shapes now if you look at the toolbar up top you can see we could also easily add shapes right here as well so if you tap right here you have all these different shapes that you could add we also have this a right here which allows you to add a text and add a signature and by the way I highly recommend adding a signature right here that way it's easy for you to sign and you know share documents online so just make your signature right here tap done and now you have that signature saved and you can input it on to documents and again send those off to the person that needs that signed documents we also have a good selection of pins to choose from so we have our highlighters our pins you have your eraser you also have something called watercolor so this one's really cool you can see it makes like a watercolor right here so let me do it in a different color so you can see and it's very realistic it really looks like watercolors and again with this hover feature it's so awesome because you can see you know where you're going to paint essentially before you actually paint so i'm going to go back to the regular pencil right here and if i started typing out something so you can see right here i wrote out this is a test sentence that is not straight now if i select this if i just select this whole sentence right here let's select everything you can see it selects it very easily and tap you can see if we go over we have straighten and now if i do that you can see it's not perfect but it does help straighten that out a little bit the next thing you need to do is utilize dictation so i know i've not used dictation like ever on my iphone or my ipad but now with ios and ipad os 16 dictation is so much more efficient and so much more smart than it has been previously so this may be something you want to do when writing out text messages emails or just taking notes in general so you can see right down here on the keyboard we have a little microphone icon if you tap on that that will invoke dictation so you can see it's kind of typing out what I'm saying now if I stop you could see that I'm typing after I take a break and then when I start talking again it continues the dictation and it does not stop so that is super convenient and you will also notice that based on my pauses and the sentence it's going to add commas and periods so you don't actually need to say comma period exclamation point or any of that you can also tell it to write out emojis so dog emoji cat emoji alligator emoji you can see it will write out those emojis instead of actually just saying you know emoji now you do also have some settings for this so if you go into your settings and then go to general and then to keyboard you will see down here we have dictation so you can turn that off if you would like to but that's what you want to have on then you do also have auto punctuation so if that's giving you issues you could turn that off if you would like but I find that to be extremely useful and while we're in here you may as well look at these other settings as well to see if you would like to have any of these enabled or disabled like if you don't like the check spelling you could turn that off caps lock shortcuts predictive text smart punctuation you could turn all of those off if you would like to now the next thing you want to do is try out center stage and portrait mode while in FaceTime call or any type of call where it's using your front facing camera so this feature just essentially uses AI to track your face and you can see it always keeps your face in at the center and it will zoom in or zoom out depending on how close or far you are from the camera so this is extremely beneficial I use it every single time I'm in a conference call a meeting or just a regular FaceTime it's so useful now if you swipe down on the control center you do have some settings right here so if you tap and hold on video effects you can turn to center stage off right there you also have portrait mode which I find to be really helpful as well to blur out the background and then if you tap and hold on mic mode you can see we have different microphone modes as well so we have standard voice isolation and wide spectrum now I find standard to still be the best quality but you can experiment with these if you would like to and speaking of FaceTime you might also want to go into your FaceTime settings and go down under automatic prominence and turn that on or off so it says during group FaceTime calls the tile of the person speaking will automatically become larger so I find that to be kind of annoying sometimes if you do go into group FaceTime calls so you can turn that off if you would like you also have FaceTime live photos and the most important one here is live captions so this one's pretty cool because it will give you live captions of what the other person is saying while you're on that FaceTime call the next thing you want to do is explore the new weather application yes we finally have a weather app with iPad OS 16 right here on this M2 iPad Pro so if you tap on that you will see that this is the brand new 
weather application and it's fully decked out just like on the iPhone. So we have all of our temperatures up here for the day. We have our 10 day forecast, our air quality, our UV index, our precipitation map. And of course, if you tap on any of these, it will give you more details in this graph view right here. We can change all kinds of things in here. So it's fully functional. It's fully featured like the iPhone application. And it's really nice to have here on the iPad. Finally, it took them long enough, but we still do not have a calculator application, which still baffles me to this day why we don't have a calculator on the iPad by default. The next thing you want to do is to change even more display settings. So I showed you guys, if you go into your display and brightness and down here to view, that's why it looks smaller right now. Everything looks smaller because I do have more resolution because I'm on more space. You can of course change that to larger text as well. If you would like to, you could just change that to your liking. Just kind of try those out and see which one you like. Now, other things you should change in here are auto lock. I would recommend having this on, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Mine's on never just for the sake of this video, but if I wasn't recording, it would be on 15 minutes right there. Just so your display doesn't stay on all night. We also have a new feature down here called reference mode. So it says use this mode for color critical workflows in a controlled viewing environment. Turning on reference mode may affect battery life. So this is essentially if you just want to match colors. If you're color grading videos or photos, you might want to have that turned on. But for most people, if you're not in the creative field, you're not going to want to touch that. We also have text size right here. So you can change your text size. Now a little tip right here, you might want to add this to the control center. So if you go down right here, you do have text size. So you could change that on the fly from the control center. You could also do it on a per app basis. We have bold text right there. And then we do also have our automatic light and dark mode. I would recommend having that turned on to automatic unless you're just an always dark fan. You can keep that on dark mode right there. And then if we go to accessibility and then to display and text size, you can see even more changes right here, more toggles that you can change. We have our auto brightness right here, which I turned off personally. I like it on my iPhone, but not on my iPad, but that is something you can experiment with. We also have our reduced white point color filters. Just take a look at all of these and see what you might consider changing. The next thing you want to do is to customize your iPad. So this looks like every other iPad when it comes out of the box. So we're going to want to change that. So the first thing we need to do is change that wallpaper. This everybody has this. Let's go into our settings. Let's go to wallpaper. Let's tap right here on the lock screen and we're going to, or actually we're going to tap right here, choose new wallpaper. I wish it was like the iPhone, but it's not. If we go to stills right here, then go all the way to the bottom. You will see we have two exclusive wallpapers just for the M2 iPad pro. So you could choose this blue and purple or this kind of pinkish and purple one right here. So I'm going to choose this one. Let's tap on set. Let's set to both right here and then go back. You can see instantly we have a huge change in the look of our home screen and it doesn't look like everybody else's. Now you're also going to want to change up the widget. So you're probably not going to want the default layout here for the widget. So if you tap and hold on the screen and tap on the plus in the top left, you will see all of our different widgets that you could add right here. Now I like having the music one. So I'll add a music one. Let's just add the regular small one right there. And if I wanted to put this on top of another one, I can, you can see we can put all of these kind of just on top of each other. So I'm going to get out of this one. I'm going to remove that. We're going to remove the weather and I do like the battery, but I want it to be smaller. So we're going to X out of that and we're going to add new ones. We're going to add a new battery right here. We'll do this one actually. Yeah, we'll do that one small as well. We're going to add a big calendar. Now, unfortunately you cannot change the size after you already, you know, put these in, you're going to have to delete and create a new one, which I hope that's something that comes in the future. You're also going to want to add different toggles to your control center. So by default, there's only four toggles in there. You're going to want more than that. So if you go into your settings here and then go to control center, you want to add some of the useful ones. So silent mode is not very useful in my opinion on the iPads. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that camera. Not really useful in my opinion. The ones that I think are useful are stage manager notes is pretty useful. I think quick notes is more useful though. So we're going to X out of that. We're going to add quick notes. We're going to add, let's see, we're going to add dark mode. We're going to add flashlights, hearing keyboard, brightness, low power mode and screen recording. So those are the ones I find personally to be the most useful, but you can adjust this to your liking. Of course, if you don't have a keyboard attached, you don't need keyboard brightness in there, but all of these I find to be very useful on the iPad. And if you wanted to move multiple applications around at once, you could just tap and 
hold on one of these and then just simply tap on the others while you have this one selected right here. So just like you do on the iPhone, you can do that right here on the iPad. Now, if you want to remove an application just from your home screen, but not entirely from your device, like for example, iMovie, GarageBand, Keynote, I'm probably not going to use any of those, but I might. So I don't want to fully delete them. So if I tap on this and I tap on remove from home screen, that will put it over in the app library, which this is the app library, by the way, but it's not going to completely delete it from my device. Now, for example, you know, something like iMovie, honestly, I'm probably never going to use iMovie. So I could just go ahead and delete that like so tips, I'm not going to use that. So just kind of delete the applications you don't think you're ever going to use and start installing new applications. Now, when you do install new applications from the App Store, if you go into your settings, and then go to home screen and multitasking, you want to make sure right here under newly downloaded apps, that me personally, I like to have this set to app library only. So you could change this if you want. And when you have this set to app library only, anytime you download an application, it's not going to show up on your home screen until you add it to your home screen. So if you go over to the app library, you're going to have to search for it or find it in one of these folders and then add it to your home screen. So for example, if I take right here, if I tap and hold on one of these, it will say to add to home screen. So let me find one. So I'm just going to remove pages from the home screen and then go over and you can see pages is right here. So if I tap and hold on that, it will say add to home screen. And that way it will add it to my home screen and I can move it around right there. But again, I like having this set to app library only just to keep a very clean home screen and only have what I want to be on there. And you can see we have other things in here as well, like changes for the dock. You can use large app icons. If you turn that on, you will see that the app icons turn much larger, which looks worse in my opinion, but you have all these different options to change in there. So just go ahead and do that. You will want to customize your iPad to look different from just the default setup. The next thing you need to do is learn how to use an external SSD or an external hard drive with your iPad Pro for managing files. So if I plug in my SSD right here, you can see that at first nothing changes. You don't get any pop-ups or anything like you do on a computer. But if you go into the files application, so here's files right here, you will see over on the left-hand side, we have our T7 Touch, for example, right here and it will load up all the files that I have on the external device. So what's cool about this is that not only can you take and drag and drop files from your external device to your iPad or vice versa, you could take files off of your iPad and put them onto your external drive, but also you can do things like changing file extensions, you have quick actions and much more. So let me find a photo for example. So here is a photo. If I take and hold on this, you can see that we have quick actions right here. And if you tap on quick actions, we have remove background, which is really cool. You also have convert image, create PDF. You can do all of this straight from your iPad, which makes it a very handy, you know, kind of just tool to have, especially if you're traveling and you may not have access to a computer. The next thing you need to do is strongly consider getting the magic keyboard. So this changes the entire experience of using the iPad Pro. I cannot imagine using this iPad Pro, especially the 12.9 inch without the Magic Keyboard. It really makes that big of a difference, especially when you add the Apple Pencil on top of that. I mean, I know it's very expensive, but trust me, it is well worth it. Now, if you do want a less expensive option, there are some alternatives that I will leave linked in the description below, but just know that they're not going to, you know, live up to what the Magic Keyboard can do on the iPad and all the built-in capabilities that it has. And then the final thing you need to do is try out the new Freeform application. So this is an iPad OS 16.2, which is currently in beta as of the time of recording this video. But the Freeform application is basically a big whiteboard that allows you to collaborate with other people on their Mac, their iPad, or their iPhone. So this is going to be great if you work remote, like at an agency or somewhere creative, you're going to be able to use this Freeform application. And I think you should get used to it right away because I could see it being very useful in the workspace in the future. So there you have it. Those are the first 14 things that you need to do on your brand new M2 iPad Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iPad and iOS coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.